Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking and subscribing the channel is free and easy, and it helps me out a lot. If you want to go a little farther with your support, I have Patreon and YouTube membership available, which includes access to the Boston Roll Discord server, early access to things I'm working on, sideboard plans, cards I'm buying, you could have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use the YouTube membership option, you get sweet, unique YouTube badges and emotes for the channel. If you want to play what I'm playing, you can use the code Boston Roll to support my channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com. And if you're playing on Magic Online, a CardHoarder.com loan account can let you play any deck anytime. If you want to wear your support, there is Boston Roll merch available. All of these links are in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I am playing Legacy Merfolk. And this is a deck from the King Centaur via Patreon. The King Centaur has me playing Merfolk again. I think this is the fourth time in three or four months that I've played the deck. I started off with a 5-0. And then the second league went all right. I think it was a 4-1 if I remember. And then something weird happened in the most recent league. My brain just sort of broke. I don't know if it was lack of sleep. I was hungry, distracted, anxious about stuff. Unclear. But I played some of the worst magic of my life. <laughs> and all of that was caught on camera. So I'm glad to have a chance to redeem for the Merfolk tribe here. I'm going to try to play a little tighter. And this list is super tight. This one is all of the basic stuff you'd expect no frills, nothing fancy, and that's how I like it. We have 20 lands, including 4 Mutavault, 4 Cavern, 11 Basic Islands, sign me right up. 4 Aether Vial is part of the mana base. Benthic Biomancer, I love this as a 1-drop. I've been really unimpressed with Curse Catcher, and every time I have this card, I'm pretty excited. Tide Shaper is one of the cards from Modern Horizons 2 that's just been really phenomenal in my testing. A lot of people got distracted by Rashad and Dockhand, which turned out to not be that good of a card. It doesn't really do what Merfolk is trying to do, which is get the opponent dead. You'll notice no Wasteland, no Days, no Rashad and Port in this deck. That's just not what Merfolk's trying to do anymore. We're trying to cast two power creatures, then turn them into three and four and five power creatures and make them unblockable and win the game. Tide Shaper does a great job of kind of playing the role of Rashad and Port, where it turns a non-blue source into a blue source instead plus it turns on all of the island walk abilities from our lords love tide shaper love benthic biomancer not messing around with courage catch there i love it silver girl adept just default merfolk just two one draw a card that's a powerful creature all day every day the eight lords the only the island walk lords there's no Mer merfolk rejiri or Royal Home Commander or anything. The Merfolk deck has moved on past those back in the ancient times. Merfolk Trickster is great. This thing can let you tempo through Uro, lets you tempo through Emrakul, just turns off a Grizzlebrand. Like this, this is a extremely powerful card for how innocuous its stats are. And especially the way you're coming out of the gates with Merfolk, just always pressuring the opponent. Buying one turn is usually all it takes. Svalen of the Sea and Sky. I've been really impressed with this card. Whenever it attacks, you draw. When you have at least two other Merfolk, it's indestructible. And other Merfolk you control have Ward 1. Just really great across the board. Plus a 3 mana 3 4 is pretty huge in Legacy. And of course, for Trinim Nemesis, this card redefined Legacy when it was printed. And it's still pretty good now. It's The thing that pushed it out of the format was Plague Engineer. But having all these Lords means that your Merfolk or your true name nemesis is a 4-2 and doesn't die to Plague Engineer, which is pretty lucky because Plague Engineer is really good against this deck in general. And there are six forces and four Chalice of the Voids to keep our Merfolk in play, get over the finish line. This is a true aggro deck. I'm here for it. Let's go play some games. I'm on the draw in round number one with a tragic one lander. The hand's great otherwise, but you just can't keep hands like this with Merfolk. Even though it is a blue deck, it doesn't have the cantrips that other blue decks do. And as a result, you just have to mulligan hands that don't have the mana to cast your spells. I'm going to ship the Mutavault here. I have the islands, and that's what I need to play a game on. This chalice is a little bit tragic. Oh god. Dothy Voidwalker. Okay, so it looks like we're playing in some sort of two-card Monty. And I'm going to get True Name Nemesis. Like, whatever they take with the Thoughtseize gets exiled with the Dothi Voidwalker 
and they can just cast it next turn. But True Name Nemesis and Dothy Voidwalker are basically the same card in this matchup. They're both just a three power unblockable thing. Very nice. That's about as good a top deck as I could hope for. Kind of hope they do cast True Name. Oh god. That was a dirty hymn to Tarak. And they got all those cards. What did they get? They got a uh, Chalice and... Oh, that Those are my revealed cards, not my exiled cards. That's not what I need to see. They got Master and the Chalice. Okay. That's among the best draws that I could have. I'm going to cast this, reveal Zvalen, draw a card, Master. Hope they don't have another Hymn to Tarak. So if I can get this Zvalen into play, the game actually becomes pretty interesting and competitive. But if I can't, I am in trouble. Here comes the Voidwalker. The race is on. It looks like I'm getting a turn here. I really hope I draw a land right now. Nice. Zvalen of the Sea and Sky is in play. I can violin a Merfolk to give it indestructible if they try to destroy it. Do I think this deck's going to have... Alright, I'm just going to Vile for damage. They could Fatal push Zvalin in response here, which I could have played around. But I can't play around Swords to Plowshares anyway, so... Did I lose it? Ah, what a tilt. I briefly considered just holding that and then determined that the Swords of Plowshare Fatal Push split wasn't worth it. But here we are. Turns out it was worth it. I'm going to leave Vile on 2 going into my turn. I can cast the 3 drops, but the card that I can't cast is Silver Girl Adept if I draw it. But it's a great card to Vile in. We do have the same life total, and they have one card in hand right now. Let's see, are they going to cast Zvalen or True Name Nemesis right now? True Name, okay. I probably would have cast Zvalen because at least that gets to draw a card. Alright, so I am going to say no for the reasons described. Hell yeah. Alright, cast with Kicker, Tide Shaper. Gets to shape the tides. I'm going to hit one of the scrublands. I could hit the Urborg and turn things into not island or not swamps anymore, but I think taking them off double white is worth more long term. Master only gives other merfolk island walk, that's why it didn't attack. But I am currently winning this race. Okay, wasting their own island. That's smart. Now they can block. I love that they had to do that, though. That's a deal. Let's draw another Tide Shaper. Or True Name Nemesis is good. That's not good. Dark Confidant. Their life total is low enough that Bob Flips could matter, but I think the cards are worth more at this point. They found a Wasteland off Bob. That will protect them from the next Tide Shaper. I'll have to target their basic swamp if I draw Tide Shaper. Hey! You love to see it, just drawing the perfect card all the time. Let's hope that one card in their hand isn't a removal spell. Hit the basic swamp. They can't waste it. If they drew Swords to Plowshares, they're going to get a two for one here. If they didn't, they're going to take a million. And that's the the whole thing. All right, cool. They're at five. Now Bob is a real clock, and they're actually just dead on board. Dark Ritual, I'm sure, is not helpful here. We know their card in hand isn't helpful. And we know Dark Ritual isn't helpful. So they have one wild card here. And it did not do the job. Awesome. Sideboarding against Dead Guy Al. I don't think I want Force of Wills and Negations in the deck. 
most of the things that I want to counter are him to Turok. Maybe some number of force will, but force negation is definitely coming out. I like dismember and echoing truth. Just answering their things is worth a lot. They're a Stoneforge Mystic deck. I want to make sure I don't die to Cauldra. I want to make sure I don't die to um, Dothy Voidwalker. Just make sure they don't get ahead with Bob. Like All of those things matter here. Chalice on one is okay, but being on the draw makes it kind of suspicious and slow, especially against this deck full of discard spells. So I'm going to bring in the Flusterstorm. That's one of the few things I have that can interact cleanly with him to Turok. And do I want any of this other stuff? Probably not. I guess I could play the Spyglasses and just name Voidwalker or Stoneforge Mystic. Sorry for those background noises. That's my neighbor with their loud car. Can't do anything about that. Do I just get all the way off Chalice of the Void for Force of Will? If I only have one, then Force of Will, I just need to tempo through their important things. Okay, I'm going to try it like this. This is different than the plan that I started moving around cards for, but I think it makes sense once we get to the other end. Like as a comprehensive package, the idea of just pushing through makes a lot of sense to me. I'm pretty sure this is a mulligan, though I do have 20 lands in the deck. In Benthic Biomancer goes a long way. Tide Shaper is really good. I'm actually going to keep this hand, even though it is breaking my rule of make sure you can cast your spells. There's 19 lands in my 53 card deck right now. I'm likely to get discarded anyway. I just really don't want to mull to 6 or 5 against the Thoughtseize Him to Tarok deck. It'll depend on their hand, but the card I'm worried about is Benthic Biomancer. Though they might want to take the Force of Will or the Dismember. I bet they take Dismember before Force of Will. Ooh, they took Spyglass. That's interesting. That one was not on my radar. They must have Stoneforge Mystic. That's the only thing that makes any sense to take that. Okay, hit my land. That's a big relief. Being Waterlog Grove and being susceptible to Wasteland while also hurting me isn't great, but I'll take it over nothing every time. Dark Confidant. I want to save my Force of Will. Now I have the choice of color screwing them with Tide Shaper or... Okay, that changes everything. Now I just dismember and play Aether Vial. Uh, I guess I should offer them the attack first. If they want to trade their Bob for Benthic Biomancer, I'll save my dismember for the next thing. They're not going to take this trade, but I'll at least offer it to them. Bang. Your member is dissed. <laughs> Your poor member. They very importantly don't have a black source other than Urborg right now, so Tide Shaper is looking really juicy. If I have to cast Force of Will this turn... Okay, Wasteland's pretty good. If I have to cast Force of Will this turn, it's going to be a hard choice between Tide Shaper and Zvalin. I guess it's pretty easily Zvalin at this point. I'm not going to fight over that. I'm going to fight over, over everything that could pick it up. Still interested in drawing a land here. Did not draw a land. Found another Dismember, though. Will eventually come in handy. It'll help my ignoring Umazawa's Jitte plan. Karakas, another non-black source. Really want this Tide Shaper in play right now, turning off Urborg. I'm not going to Violin Tide Shaper. I can do better with that one. I really want to cast it for mana. Like so. I'm going to attack first, and then make decisions later, like a real aggro player. Oh, any removal spell is going to fly here, but I am going to hit that Urborg while I can. Uh-oh, did I misunderstand the layers? Oh, um, yeah, I guess I did. I don't know. 
I'll pull up the layer chart in between rounds and figure out why that was that way. There's a Kaya on the stack right now who can exile my... This is actually really interesting. If they exile Vile, they lose their Kaya to Benthic Biomancer. I'm actually going to let Kaya resolve, which might seem crazy. And they exiled my Biomancer. Okay, that lets me get Zvalen into play with the Vile. I had that... I had something worth doing one way or the other, but I couldn't force Kaya because Zvalen was my blue card. This is interesting. I think I want to keep Lord back as a blue card to go with force. Oh shit, they have Caracas. I've made a huge mistake. I needed to play Lord there. Damn. I missed a imp very important detail here. Really, really needed to put that Lord into play. Damn. I'm here trying to redeem myself from playing bad with Merfolk, and here I am playing bad with Merfolk. Yeah, if Lord's in play, I get to attack Kaya here. At least I have a clean answer to this. Even get to tap for black because they have Herborg. Another Vile. I think putting the Lord into play to pressure Kaya is more important. Ugh, Kaya should be dead right now. But, time to tighten up. Vanishing Verse. So this can... This exiles my creature. I can force here to try to remove Kaya. I think this is sort of my last stand here. This Valen isn't getting much better because they have Caracas. Without Wasteland in my deck, I would have to Tide Shaper the Caracas and then... Cast Zvalen. I just hope they never have a removal spell. Okay, if they have Plow, that sucks. But I'm going to attack Kaya. And now I have the choice of getting Vial into play and start taking it up, or play around Discard and play my Lord. And I think I want the Vial. This Jitte is looming. Oh god, Stoneforge Mystic, that was a good draw. Okay. That turn where I misstepped with the Zvalen is gonna haunt me. I don't know if this game is fundamentally different. I guess the difference is I have Vial in play versus not having Vial in play. I think this pair of three threes keeps the Stoneforge Mystic in check, and if I can get up to this True Name Nemesis, that card is actually a giant banger in the matchup. It beats Batterskull and Jitte. Now we see if Cauldra is just in their hand already. Yeah, if they like Stoneforge and Cauldra and then equip Jitte to it, we're dead. Yep, okay. I guess I can take five from Cauldra, and if I draw a land, True Name Nemesis actually just holds the fort forever. So I should not concede yet. It's actually not even close to a snap concede here. Every land in my deck is an out right now. And Merfolk Trickster buys me a turn out of the Vile. I have a lot of draws. Let's draw some of them. Hey! Even get to attack here. Bash. And these are both 3-3s, three threes, so they can't, they're not checked by the Jitte. Trickster can get the Vile up to 3, then I can True Name. And then I'm a an island away from, a Tide Shaper away from just bashing. Or a second True Name away from bashing, because this True Name is a 5-3. They're dead in two. All right, they're moving Jitte over. Beginning of combat. I am going to Vile in Trickster. And I'm going to hit the Stoneforge Mystic. I think taking 5 damage from Cauldra is fine. What I can't do is let them have more counters on Jitte. Right, Cauldra has Trample, so True Name doesn't actually check it forever. It doesn't check it for very long at all, actually. I go to 5 here. I'm probably dead. A second Trickster is great. Echoing Truth is great. Bluster Storm, probably not what I'm looking for here. 
I don't think I have attacks. There are no islands on their side, unfortunately. Tide Shaper off the top wins this game, though. But didn't have it. Yeah, if they put Jitte onto Cauldra and just get to work, that is a problem for me. Yeah, I, I think that now that we're here and this game ended up this close, that turn where I just wasted my whole turn casting Svelin feels really bad. True Name Nemesis comes in. Protection from you. And plus four plus four on Stoneforge Mystic. It's a block here. Here. And I can't take five, obviously. That is lethal. And I think the fact that I have to line up a bunch of non-lethal blocks here is game over. They have two lethal attackers. There was not a lethal swing back here. Somehow, can't even vanishing Flusterstorm this vanishing verse. Okay, yeah, we're done. That was close. Flusterstorm is almost useful. Okay, a small misstep on an earlier turn ended up losing on a, a game that was really close, in fact. Should I have my Vencers in? Vencer is the type of top deck, but Vencer is mostly only for show and tell. Like getting to four mana, especially in this Wasteland matchup, seems like a bad deal. I think my sideboard plan is what it needs to be. Hercules Recall, though, might is that better than Echoing Truth? Is it better than Force of Will? Hercules Recall clearing Jete and any number of counters on it is a huge deal. Is it better than Flusterstorm? Fluster protecting my things from removal and myself from discard seems pretty good, so I'm actually just going to roll with that. This hand is solid. I'm going to keep it slow, but it's solid. Lead on island, of course. Hope to draw a two drop. Maybe even Tide Shaper. Ooh, no play. I'll take it. Biomancer, right on time. I'm going to run out the Muta Vault, because if they have Wasteland, I really don't want to get taken off double blue. This hand, the easiest way that this hand dies is they have... I just can't cast my spells. True Name Nemesis, famously powerful against Stoneforge Mystic Strategies. Okay, and Step Fetch, no play. Do I force a Will of Stoneforge Mystic here? I don't force that. They can have that. This is a damage race. And I'm trying to run. Okay, they don't have counter spells anyway, so I can save the cavern and play around Wasteland. And I'm going to attack for one first and lead on True Name Nemesis. My plan is to just cast True Name Nemesis twice and then have the game end. Force of Will Plague Engineer if I need to. Umazawa's Jate revealed off Bob. Dothy Voidwalker. I don't think I care about that. Resolves. Another island. Do they want to trade? Do I want to offer a trade? I don't think I want to even offer it. I think I just want to attack for three, play my other true name. I have a good attack here, and I don't think they would block, but I'm not even going to give them the choice. Second true name. I am your nemesis. I'm going to have to Force of Will Jete now because they do have the Shadow Creature. Oh, they just flipped Cauldra off their Bob. Get wrecked, nerd. You're dead on board. It's just good deck building. I top 16 Eternal Weekend one year in Vintage when in the final round I was playing some sort of creaturey Dark Confidant mirror and my opponent was way ahead, but then they flipped Blightsteel Colossus to their Bob and they went from like 18 life to 6, and then I won the game. That was a good match. Force of Will on that. And they would have to Dark Ritual into Plague Engineer to stabilize this game. We got the GG's in the chat, though. Woof. That was a tight one. GG's opponent. Merfolk, chugga chugga chugga. I am on the draw in round number two, and I'm going to keep.
I have two lands and stuff to do. What else do you want out of Murpho? To answer my own rhetorical question, I would like an Aether Vial on turn one, but I'll live without it. Mishra's Bobble. Okay. My opponent's name is Urza the Planeswalker. That's their username, so I imagine they have good taste. And this Mishra's Bobble. Oh, bummer. There's just a D Dragon Rage Channeler deck. Unfun. Uncool. I was hoping for an Urza deck. Or something cool. Instead, I'm going to put Tide Shaper on the battlefield as a 1 1 creature. Just hope that it stays there. Against all reason. Against the Days, Force of Will, Lightning Bolt, everything deck. But if they spend any of those cards on Tide Shaper, that eventually favors me, I think. We'll see. It'll depend on how hard this Ragavan hits. A lot of the cards in my deck they don't really want, but things could go wrong. Ragavan has connected, and they exiled an island. Okay. Crisis averted. And they cast Ponder, which is not standstill, and that means I'm in a good place. Now the choice is to... Oh, no longer a choice. I'm just going to cast Silver Go Adept. I was going to say the choice is to cast Adept, or try to trickster their Ragavan on their turn. And drawing this banger three drop makes me want to hit my third land in time. Exiling that island, the Ragavan was actually pretty good. Wasteland is devastating to me. But here we are, trying to get through this. If at any point they can't remove my blocker or it's not worth it for them to do it, then my string of creatures do line up pretty well against Ragavan. Unfortunately, their string of removal is also good against my creatures. All right, Ragavan coming in again. The second hit. This one exiled True Name Nemesis. F my life. That's one of the best cards they could possibly hit, and they have the mana to do it. That does motivate them to commit all their treasures. Not that that's particularly comforting to me because this card is going to destroy me. If I draw a land right now, preferably Cavern of Souls, and I can get my own Trinum down, I can win this race off of my Lords. But if I can't check this Ragavan and then pull ahead on it, I am going to lose. And if they have Days, I also just lose. Okay, Force Pitching Delver. I don't think this game is winnable anymore. Okay. Unfun. I think we win that game on the play, but we were on the draw, so get wrecked me. Sideboarding for a Ragavan deck. Dismember looks good. We also saw Delver, so this is not the standstill deck. This is just blue-red Delver. Bluster Storm, I believe, is good. Echoing Truth, I don't, not interested in. Relic, probably not where I want to be. The Force of Negations are coming out. And one of the Force of Wills, probably. And it's just a three-card sideboard plan. The Chalices are good if I have room to get them in. Unfortunately, that game, they just had Ragavan bearing down the entire time. And never really gave me a chance. Which is their plan, of course. But here is my deck. On the play, my goodness. I hate the one-lander. I love the Vile. I'm going to keep... I would not keep this hand if I didn't have Force backing it up. I maybe still shouldn't keep it, but the upside of land is so enormous, and the hand still plays even without a land, so it's... Ugh. Please don't punish me, deck. Let me just draw a land, cast this chalice, and then the game is over. They have a Misty Rainforest. I hope this is not Ragavan. It is Dragon Rage Channeler. Which is kind of like Ragavan, but not as imminently deadly. Land? Shit. Okay. Pass the turn. My Vile will be active next turn. I can Fluster Storm this turn if they have something that I need to Fluster. I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe Expressive Iteration? Do I just zap off Fluster Storm on an Iteration? Maybe? I'm planning on tapping out for the rest of the game, so maybe. 
I'm not pointing it at a ponder. They milled a Dragon Rage Channeler. They have land creature, and there's a sorcery on the way in there. If they have Brainstorm right now, that or just bolt me in for six. Okay. Fisher's Bobble also does it. And they milled it in an instant, so five card types in the graveyard. Merfolk Trickster can clean up this Dragon Rage Channeler next turn. I vial it in, it loses all abilities block. Extremely interested in drying. A land, of course. That will continue to be true until I draw a land. Okay. Now the choice is play Chalice or leave up Flusterstorm. And I think playing Chalice is just very clearly the correct play. This turns off the lightning bolts and everything. Future Ragavans, future everything. Like this is just such a insane card right now. They get to mill one with Channeler. I'm going to let the Brainstorm resolve. That's not the fight I'm looking for. I probably will force back if they force this Chalice. And by probably, I mean definitely. I guess I should be pretty worried about Murktide Regent. Maybe they just won't have a counterspell. Dope. I think I have to let them have the Dragon Rage Channeler during the developmental turns, or the developmental part of their turn, and then just shrink it and block it during combat. Because it has to attack. It's not like they can play around Merfolk Trickster. And if Chalice resolved, they might not have a counterspell if they do go for Murktide Regent. So holding up this force for a Murktide Regent is the next major phase of this game. And Violent Trickster. Trick you. Now they'll have some decisions to make about do they want to just fire off random spells to surveil? Or do they have Brazen Borrower? A Braid. Okay. Braid targeting my creature. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna let a braid resolve or the trigger resolve, and I can force this or I can save it because I can do the trickster thing again next turn with flusterstorm back up. Yeah, I'll just take three. I'm not gonna give them a two for one. I don't have to. The thing is still a one one for the turn. The trigger still resolves. That's fun. They probably want to zap my mute default. Yep, that's the right play. I hate when my opponent has the right play. I'm going to leave Vile on two. My whole hand is two drops. It's nice that I have both tricksters. I only play two. And getting this channeler out of play is going to be a huge part of my game plan. Backing it up with Flusterstorm and Force of Will this time. Huge, huge, huge deal. i got to keep in mind that my first Flusterstorm will get countered by Chalice, but the Storm Trigger will resolve. So the fluster will be kind of tight. Do I fluster this? Maybe. I don't think so. No, go ahead. It's kind of sick that last turn on a board with Chalice of the Void and Aether Vial, they had to abrade my Merfolk Trickster. Like That's just how important this Dragon Rage Channeler is to them right now. They exiled a Brainstorm with that. So that's a spell they can't cast. Has to attack. Has to attack right into my trickster again. This time they cannot abrade. Put your creature in the graveyard, please. And then get your brainstorm countered. It's better in the graveyard than it is in exile. They do have Murktide Regent. So that wasn't a punt, it was just a decision. I'm going to vial in Silverville Adept before my vial resolves, so I know if I need to tick it up or not. And the answer is no. Ooh. Now the question is, can I ram in 19 damage before Murktide Regent kills me? If I play this, name our folk. I can Lord of Atlantis and just go to town. If they have Murktide Regent and a second counter spell, I'm in some trouble. But I think just getting in there is the play. Let's go. And I'm going to force pitching Flusterstorm if they have Murktide Regent. And there aren't a lot of other cards I'm super worried about here. Pitch the Flusterstorm. Did they find a Daze? They have a Force. Okay. So I get the first attack for 5. Then they put me to 
a much smaller number. I'm winning the race right now. That's what's important. And Mutavault is a huge deal. Okay, so I'm going to attack with my creatures that cannot be blocked. Hope they don't have another abrade. And then blue, blue. Tide Shaper with Kicker. Because I have Cavern, I can cast this into my Chalice. And turn off one of these red sources. And here's Mutavault. Let's go. I'm winning this race. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 unblockable to there. 8 unblockable. And they are dead. Okay. Game 3. Do I want Echoing Truth in strictly as a concession to Merktide Regent? Because I don't want to actually concede to Merktide Regent. A deck building concession rather than a game concession. That would involve shaving Force of Will and probably another force of will okay i mean that is what i got here and that's what i'm gonna do the alternative is bringing in the relics and just trying to control their graveyard but i think that trying to be a control deck is a mistake in the matchup i'm gonna keep this even though it's kind of sus wasteland is very very good against my hand right now Oh, uh, they have the Ragavan. Yuck. Ooh. Does that change anything? What does that do for this game? I think that, yeah, that does just change everything. File. Let's go. Commit to a Ragavan hit. They had the days. Okay. Please don't have True Name Nemesis this time. They exiled an island. I kind of want an island, but also not really. And I think I'm just going to go for a Chalice here. Lock those one drops down. And then if I do this next turn, I can Benthic Biomancer with Cavern. And then I have Biomancer and Mutavault to block with. All right, just a little abrade off of their treasure. Pretty good stuff. And another monkey. Every single time. Uh Okay. They didn't have the mana for it. That's good. Leave it alone. Oh, they did have the mana. They just chose not to cast it. That's interesting. That's probably scarier somehow. Okay, so Cavern on Merfolk. I'm giving up on Vile. I just have to get Chalice into play at this point. And play Biomancer. I played the Chalice first because I don't want my Biomancer to get lightning bolted. Biomancer is going to have to trade with Ragavan, I think. That thing is just pulling ahead too far. I can't cast this vial because of my own chalice, so that's pretty awkward. Can't cast Flusterstorm because I don't have any real blue mana. Can't cast Master. Just can't do anything, is what I'm saying here. If they find a Wasteland and hit my cavern, I'm just miles and miles behind. Delver was exiled. That's probably good. The Delver gives them the fourth creature type, though, so the Dragon Rage Channeler does live. Do they want to put their Ragavan in harm's way to keep me from looting? I think they probably should have. Oh, God, they had the Wasteland, too. That was a filthy, filthy slow roll. Island? Shit. All right. I'm losing this game. It's not having blue mana. And them... Pulling ahead with expressive iteration is just too much for me. When your opponent is seeing five cards a turn to your one when you're already behind, it's not a good situation. Pick my set another three here. Come on, deck. How about an island? Island for your Witcher. Uh, just more double blue spells. Okay. If they attack for three, and then I draw Dismember. I can go to three to dismember their creature. At which point, I'm dead to everything. And at any point they have Merktide Regent, they can just cast that thing, and I have no plan. Uh, okay, I'm done. I'm done playing this game. There's no series of draws that get me out of it from this point. That is what I was talking about in the deck tech and in the mulligan decisions of 
the mono blue deck frequently having mana problems. And I was having mana problems before that wasteland. Like I couldn't cast any of my spells, even though I had cavern. And then they wasted me off the cavern as well. So bad times there. This and they were able to put me under the gun so fast that I couldn't get my vial in under my chalice, which maybe could have saved this game a little bit, but yeah, it just didn't come together. Blue Red Delver, hell of a deck. We're about halfway through the video, so let me just remind you that if you like this deck and you want to try it out, you can use the code Boston Roll to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com, and you can play any deck anytime with cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. These links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the play in the third round, and I'm going to have to mulligan this one. You cannot have faith in the Merfolk deck to come up with a second land. Not on seven cards. Here we go. I'm going to keep this and send one of my basic islands to the bottom. And I'm going to play Mutavault Vile. Mutavault leaves the door open that I might be a tribe other than Merfolk. Though they should be suspecting Merfolk. Not that that's super important in the grand scheme of things. Like bluffing that I'm Merfolk for one turn basically doesn't matter. But leading on Mutavault, I also get to attack with Mutavault on turn two. They did not shuffle their library. That's cool. Zvalen of the Sea and Sky. Yes, please. I'm gonna attack with Mutavault. I would not have done this if they just left up red mana. I don't want to get stone rained by a lightning bolt, but I'm happy to just get in for two. The Delver deck. Shocking. Okay, so Cavern of Souls on Merfolk gets Zvalen into play. Blue, blue, colorless. Here's Zvalen. And I think I want to save my, my Vile activation. I don't think there's a reason to do it now. Can't think of one. Like, I might still want to trickster them. Delver didn't flip, that's good. Yeah, if Delver had flipped and attacked, I would want to trickster and then block with Svalin. Okay. This creature's a 3-4. You got another one? Shot through the gut! And you are wrecked. This is unfortunate for them. Shloop. Oh ho ho ho! Mine rot! And they took two damage to cast it. Filthy, filthy stuff. I'm going to leave Vial on two, because I have a two drop in my hand. I can get all sorts of value out of this situation. Just crush for a million here. Lord of Atlantis gets to attack as well. Even your Tide Chaper, that's cool. I'll just play another Merfolk. I think I'm just going to play this. They can. I forgot that Zvalen was going to draw a card, and leaving Cavern untapped probably makes more sense. If they daze this, it's fine. They can't really afford to go back a land when they're dead on board like this. Knowing they have Gutshot in their deck, though, is definitely something. Polluted Delta. Okay, they are bolting my Lord. Because of Ward, they have to pay one extra. Then after they pay the one, I'll force the Lightning Bolt. At this point, I'm just pushing for every advantage, and I'm pretty sure I just have them beat even if this doesn't resolve. Like, if they want to fight over this, that's fine. Force pitching ponder. Deal. My Lord of Atlantis is in the graveyard now. And they are dead to this trickster. Put in trickster, tap your delver, attack for a gazillion. GG. Still going to leave Vile on two. Fire up Vault. Get in for the max. Even get to draw a card. I drew Tide Shaper. It's not going to matter. They're already dead. Dead by a lot. Okay, that one was not close. Getting your beefy creatures in that survive burn, or at least demand weird answers, is definitely part of winning this matchup. Echoing Truth, I believe I determined I'm interested in. Flusterstorm was good enough. Don't want any of this other stuff. Force of Negation comes out. Some of the Force of Wills come out. Probably most of them. 
just reassessing. Like, Vile is really good. It's a really bad top deck, though, and this sort of matchup comes down to top decking a lot. So there is an argument to cut one Vile, though having Vile early is huge for the matchup. Okay, I'm just going to leave all my Vials in. We also ran last round face first into the Chalice versus Vile non synergy. This hand is a Wasteland Nightmare, but otherwise is keepable. I am going to keep it. If they have Wasteland, they have Wasteland. Get wrecked, me. But if they don't, I get to do stuff. A Cavern on Merfolk at least takes days out of the equation. I'm going to play Tide Shaper and just try to block this Ragavan. If they Wasteland Bolt me, GG. <laughs> if they don't, I get to hang out. If they have one or the other, I would prefer they Lightning Bolt. Okay, that's not Wasteland. That's good news. Good news only. That's all I'm accepting right now. I must have a second rag. Why would they just throw their rag in the garbage like this? Unless they think we're clocked. Unless they think I'm going to race them. I guess that's a reasonable concern if I'm going to like play a Lord and start crunching. If they think they're the control deck. Okay, they did have a Ponder. Bold that they ponder, so they could have pondered looking for Lightning Bolt to connect with Rag. They could have pondered looking for Wasteland to take me off my mana source. And they didn't do either of those things. So, cool. I can Trickster to try to eat this Delver, but I think I need to get cards flowing and just cast this Adept right now while I know that I can. And I'm going to show them Benthic Biomancer, which is the card that I care the least that they know about. Expressive Iteration revealed for Delver. It's a lot of looks at Wasteland, and I don't like it. The Cavern doesn't necessarily show that I have or don't have more lands. The Waterlogged Grove screams it. If I could do anything that didn't deal damage to me that turn, I would have. So they should know that Wasteland is devastating right now. And they did, in fact, find one. And they take out the cavern with that, and life is pain. And now, even if I do draw the land, the Waterlog Grove is going to hurt me along the way. Bent the Biomancer. At least I have plays, I guess. They feel really bad facing down Flip Delver of Secrets and getting hurt while I make my plays. All of this is terrible. But it is turn three. I was on the draw. I've drawn three cards and haven't seen a land since my opening seven, which say what you want about that. One out of three cards in my deck is a land. There's 20 of them. Ugh, another iteration. Just three more looks at Wasteland. Oh, Caracas, okay. That's not Wasteland. I'll take it. It's unclear to me why Caracas is in this deck. But okay. I guess I did get them pretty hard with Zvalin game one. Come on, deck. We would be racing if my Waterlog Grove was a basic island. But me having to take extra damage just to cast my spells is sending me way back. And now they're untapping into a six card hand. Red Blast is game over. Bolt's game over. Cavern of Souls is my best draw. I'll take a basic island, but Cavern is the best one. Even that, I feel like, is not going to get me there at this point. Yeah, that's definitely not it. I suppose I have to keep playing, so I think it's pretty safe to concede. So they attack me to five. If I draw a land, Echoing Truth, maybe I can tempo them out. But the casting the Truth puts me to four because of freaking Waterlog Grove. The third expressive iteration. I think the last two rounds are blowing together. This is only the second expressive iteration. Unless there's one in exile for some reason, and there's not. Okay. They didn't have Wasteland. I will continue to take that where I can get it. They're probably going to cast their Ponder here. Yep. Okay, so real talk. I go to five. If I draw Cavern of Souls, I can trickster their Delver. And put them on a three turn clock, two turn clock, actually. 
I'm in trouble to everything along the way, but a blue source here at least lets me pretend I'm in the game. That's not it. I'll get my attack in. Uh, they attack for three, I'm at two. I guess technically I'm not dead. Discards Valen. Okay, now I'm dead. I don't need to play through another wasteland. We're done. That is the most frequent way that Merfolk loses games in my in my leagues I've played lately. Just the mana in this mono blue deck is so questionable. I don't think my sideboard plan changes. And yep. Yeah, right back in. Same deck. Well, here's this hand. Three lands. They don't cast my spells, any of my spells. My hand is pretty solid otherwise, but I'm going to take a disciplined mulligan here. And regret it. I think I have to go to five. Okay, here we go. I'm going to send one of the vials, and I guess I have to send the benthic biomancer. Don't like it, but that's what we've been given. If they force of will this, that just catches up the mulligan to five. Okay. We're both down two cards. Let's go. Scalding Tarn. Delver. Okay. They're force pitched ponder. Ooh, that was a good draw. Merfolk. I'm going to get another draw here off of the Silver Gill Adept. Show them the master because that's all I got to show them. Uh, true name or Zvalen here would be pretty cool. Hey, there's Zvalen. Can we dodge Wasteland? Caracas, shit. <laughs> Come on with that. I have two legends in my deck. And you probably have one Caracas in your deck. You cheater. Okay, uh, Master is getting deployed, and I'm going to attack for three. I have to clock. There is no sitting back and keeping their creatures at bay like they're gonna unload on me or i'm gonna unload on them and that's the entire game i need to keep them treading water backwards ponder revealed for delver the good news is that now if they have wasteland it has to choose between mutavault and cavern the bad news is they just killed my master so now i'm not even really attacking effectively I mean, they're still not going to block with Dragon Rage Channeler, so I still have attacks. It's fucking Caracas, though. Alright, that's not bad. I am going to cast this in a way that lets me attack with Mutavault, and not in a way that lets me cast a, a backup Master. Or Lord, if I draw it. Okay. Not punished. Mutavault is every creature type. Not Legend, though, because that's no longer a creature type. There is a time in Magic that it was, but now it's a super type, which is a different thing. They missed their land drop, notably. That's what I was saying by attacking them. Like they, I'm sure they would have liked to ponder looking for their land drop, but instead they had to remove my master. I think I probably, on their last turn, would have pondered looking for another red card, or another red source. And I think that they're playing kind of conservatively in a way that is not beneficial to them ultimately. Like they're treading water in a race that they're losing. We're both taking four a turn. But my board is expanding along the way and theirs is not. I'm just going to get in with Mutavault and play Benthic Biomancer. Being able to loot away this Valen is pretty great in the face of Caracas. Having exactly enough mana to do all my stuff is nice. They have two card types in their graveyard, land and instant. This ponder will give them sorcery. And if they can mill a creature or find a bobble, that gives them a lot of a lot of speed. I don't think I want to respond to this by looting. I think I want to let them make all the decisions for the turn and then loot later. Okay, they found a creature. So they are going to be on, I'm now suddenly on a two turn clock, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they are on a two turn clock, but they get the first attack. If I find a Lord or if they crack a fetch land, they can win the race. 
is Krakus. I made fun of it in game two, but wow, has it just checkmated me, this game. No, not like this. Wasteland, shit. All right, now I really, really, really need an answer to one of these creatures. And it can't be Dismember. I need Echoing Truth. I boarded those in, right? Yeah. That's all I got. I guess uh, Merfolk Trickster also buys me a turn, assuming they don't have a Lightning Bolt anywhere. Discard the Zvalen, because it just doesn't matter. Ugh. Sad times. Close matchup. Their deck was doing the same thing as ours, but they have Ponder and Lightning Bolt in their deck, and we just have more Merfolk. Also, that was a Malt of 5, which was unfortunate. With two extra cards, I think we have the advantage here, but is what it is. Fucking Caracas. GG's. I'm on the draw in the fourth round with two lands. I'm going to keep it. I have my real one drop in Biomancer, and then my fake one drop in Tide Shaper. Looks like Tide Shaper's not going to have a target right away. It also looks like it won't need one. This is a great basic island, by the way. I love Tempest art lands. This was the year that I really started buying packs. I think I started playing Magic in 96. Like I became aware of what Magic was, and then 97 was when I was starting to like use my allowance to buy packs or asking for packs for my birthday and stuff, and Tempest was on the shelves. So a lot of nostalgia for me with these Tempest lands. Great choice. Oh god. What tech does this? Don't care for that. Not gonna lie, pretty surprised by that artboard. But not mad about it. Oh right, I was supposed to look up the layers and how they work. I can do that real quick right now. Okay, so here's the layer system. Copy effects layer 1, control changing layer 2, text changing effects, and then type changing effects. Where... Okay, so Urborg is a type changing effect, and so is Tide Shaper. They exist in the same layer, but Tide Shaper is more recent. I'm thinking that Moto is doing this wrong. Both of these effects exist in layer 4. And yeah, that I feel like this is a timestamp thing that Moto is doing wrong. Okay. Uh whether whether it's right or wrong, we got to live with it. So, I want to tide shaper this thing if it turns off their black, but if it gives them an underground sea instead of a basic swamp, that's bad for me. Maybe I'm supposed to just start pounding. I'll just get Lord of Atlantis in. And get to work. I have two Lords and a Zvalin. I can curve out here. I can play my second Lord plus Tide Shaper next turn and just put damage on this opponent. They have a Polluted Delta. I hope this is just... Oh, it's Esper. Okay. That was weird. They fetched and then brainstormed. What's the plan here? They didn't know the position of any cards in their deck. Like, it's turn three. They haven't manipulated their deck at all. Don't know why they would do it in the way that they just did it. But okay. Terminus? Is Terminus the answer to that question? This deck with Urborg and Basic Island can't have Terminus in it, can it? Probably does, and I'm going to get destroyed by it. Anyway, here's my Lord of Atlantis. I'm going to play the second Lord of Atlantis and only attack with Benthic Biomancer. Okay, they're predicting. Okay, that makes sense. If your Brainstorm was setting up Predict. Oh, Thassa's Oracle. Is this a Paradigm Shift deck or like a weird Doomsday list? Well, because they did that in that order, I get to attack with both of my creatures instead of just one. And they're actually going to have a pretty hard time Doomsdaying because their life total is basically gone. And I am casting this creature as a 4-4 unblockable. If they daze it, it's fine. Okay, it's in there. 3, 6, 9, 13. They are dead on board. They are dead if they doomsday and don't win right away. They could 
Paradigm Shift. It could be a Paradigm Shift combo deck and not a Doomsday deck. I'm not sure if they can shift and get Oracle back on the stack all in one turn. I don't actually know how this works at all. Shift is pretty sketchy, though. Like, that is a much worse combo than Doomsday is. Fetching to 10. They can cast Doomsday with their three lands, but it's going to be hard to win. Okay, that's not what's happening. It looks like we're going to get away with an unrelenting Packrat-style Merfolk game here. Unless they have something like Terminus and then Mishra's Bobble to trigger it, I don't know how they get out of this, because I'm going to have Triple Lord. Even if they plow one of them, they're, they're all still unblockable. Or... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, even if they plow one of my lords, they still die to the third lord this turn. Okay, Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. Oh, am I dead? One of us is dead. Okay. If they have something like Ideas Unbound in hand, I mean, they wouldn't cast this Doomsday if they weren't going to win. So I guess I lose. Okay. What's up, Doomsday? If Tide Shaper works the way I think it's supposed to, then I don't think that they would have black mana to cast Doomsday. Unless I'm just mistaken about layers, which is possible because they're tricky. But that it does appear that they are happening in the same layer and it should come down to timestamps. Lion's Eye Diamond. They, they should easily win from here if they had the LED in hand already. The brainstorm. This finds the ideas unbound. They unbound and cast Oracle. Exactly enough mana to do all that. Gross. All right, well played. And even played around days at the very end. Sure. The good news is I get to submit a bo moto bug and play this league for free. Okay, what do I do against Doomsday? I probably have to. Bring in Flusterstorm, that's an easy one. And then I don't want to board too much. That can be a mistake. Like I don't think I'll be at four mana to cast Venser. Another interactive thing is cool. I just don't think that's the type of interaction I'm looking for. Does Spyglass do anything? I could try to cheese a a fetch land or just name Edge of Autumn, but I don't think that's the play. I think just Bringing in the Flusterstorm, cutting a true name nemesis is the way to do this. And that's all I got. I've kept this hand for game two. It has two significant points of disruption. The clock's a little slow, but I think that's okay. Just a flooded strand go out of them. Cavern's a nice one. I wish I could put Cavern on Chalice, but I can't. At least Cavern unlocks my future one drops. I'll draw and make sure Zvalen gets in. And I am going to lead on Zvalen. That uses my mana the best. Zvalen drawing cards is a way forward here. Here's a fetch land. Is it time for Baleful Strix? What are we doing? Oh, okay. Stoneforge Mystic. That's the play. Do I force of will this pitching one of my masters? I think so. Getting cheesed out by Cauldra, I am just not ready to play against. This is some ancient technology that I honestly just forgot about. Old Esper Doomsday with Stoneforge Mystic in the board. This is not new or or anything. Probably should have been more aware of that. Oh, they got Jitte instead of Cauldra. Do they even have Cauldra? Maybe Cauldra's already in hand. Okay, Merfolk is the name and merfolk is the game here comes zvalen of the sea and stars or sea and sky stars are in the sky right same thing zvalen of course resolves because it was cast with cavern of souls and we pass the turn and hope they don't have cauldron in their hand i can race a jete notably because i get ward with uh, with Zvalen. And I'm going to lead on Tide Shaper. I'm not going to kick it. Oh, fuck. My bad. I forgot about my chalice. Tight. Tight plays, Brian. Well, well done. So what, now what? Let's go. <laughs> Tough it out. Here comes Zvalen. I get to draw a card. 
I'm not super worried about Jitte connecting because, like I was saying before I countered my own spell, Ward makes it cost a million to kill a creature with Jitte. Like, they have to equip Jitte, attack, get counters on it, and then pay one mana per thing to remove. And I am going to block Stoneforge Mystic when it attacks because they had the land. I have to block. If they didn't have the land, I think I could just take two or take one and try to tempo them out for a turn, get ahead with the, the master. Definitely wish I had a different 2-2 in play. Wah, 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 wah. But I messed up. Different 3-3 in play. I wonder if I, if I had remembered my chalice, do I just play Lord off the basics and let them counter it if they have a counter spell? Or do I just play it slow and save Tide Shaper for the next turn? I'm probably going to double spell wherever I can. And getting two Merfolks into play with Zvalin matters a lot. So yeah, I, I probably, I think I would have played the Lord first to play around days and then followed up with Tide Shaper. They've made the move on their Jute. I think that is the best play available to them, even though it isn't great. Ooh, they're spending mana. Okay, cool. Baleful Strix is in play. That's great for me. Please attack. Okay. They're not ready for the second master. Drawing a land was pretty great. You get to cast this one, revealing the master. If they have a counter spell, they have to use it on this thing. They didn't have one anyway. Now they can't counter this one. This one brings the pain in combat. And I am just going to attack with everything. We're here to deal damage. Opponent's dead on board. Let's go. They would need a sweeper here, I think, to stay alive, or to just combo kill me. That is always on the table. Prismatic ending. Sure. That's actually pretty bad. Swords of Plowshares is now on. If they can plow Valen, then connect with Jitte and start minusing, they can actually stabilize this game. Jeez, okay. Harsh. I think they have to move the Jitte over to the Strix. What does that do? I guess the Jitte doesn't remove either of my lords at this point anyway. If I just don't block, they go to 9, 3, 6. I'm attacking for lethal. I'm not going to give them a free attack, though. I'm going to block with my 4-3 creature. Eat their Stoneforge Mystic. If they want to use... Jitte counters, empty their Jitte counters to finish off this creature that's already drawn a card and traded for, or, and eaten a creature in combat. That's an exchange I'm okay with. They're still dead on board if they do that. If they kill this, then they're not gaining life. They need the life to be alive. Those two cards in their hand are pretty scary, though. I think if they were removal spells, they would have cast them by now. But I've been surprised by a number of their sequencing choices this match, so we will see. Like I was saying, a surprise second main brainstorm when removal spells in the first main would have been huge to make decisions based around. Or like maybe you brainstorm into Doomsday and just win the game, but instead you've spent mana doing other stuff. Like Swords to Plowshares and I guess you had to Prismatic Ending first for the brainstorm to get unlocked. Okay, end of the day it wasn't enough. Yikes. Now I have to figure out if I'm playing against Doomsday or Stoneforge Mystic or both. I think Spyglass comes in just to be safe. It has some relevant side text against Doomsday, like just naming Edge of Autumn or Street Wraith. Are any of these cards worse now? Enforced Negation is worse if they're on this fair plan. And it's just a piece of the puzzle against the, the unfair plan also. I think three is still the right number of true name nemesis, even though it is the best card against the Stoneforge Mystic deck. But depending how hard their sideboard juke is, they might also have Plague Engineers. I don't know. I think I'm not going to totally fall for their, their juke plan. I'm going to bring a Force of Negation back in. I think I want to slim down on... Is it Vile? Or I could go down to two Spyglass, or one Spyglass. 
Vial's really good, but we've seen Prismatic Ending now. I'm going to go down one Vial. It's a pretty bad top deck, and it's pretty bad against combo in general. We'll see if they're a combo deck or not this game. I don't think this is the hand. I'm going to have to mulligan this 5 lander. Oh god. We know how I feel about 1 landers, but this has Force of Will and does a lot. I'm going to keep it and probably regret it. Now, do I send one of the Tide Shapers, one of the Lords, or the Trickster? It's probably one of the Tide Shapers. Though that card plays if I don't hit my land drop right away. Trickster can buy me a turn against Jitte. Unfortunately, Trickster does not stop Thassa's Oracle, because the trigger already happens before I can take its abilities away. Tough call. I'm going to bury the Trickster and just... Hope that we're able to cheese over the finish line. If that same set of cards just didn't have Force of Will, I wouldn't keep it. Just the fact that they might be a combo deck makes me want the Force of Will pretty hard. Yikes. Okay. Glad I didn't go to 5 chasing the perfect hand against Thoughtseize. I'll just see if I can get paid off with the second land before it's too late. Oh, tricky. I think I want to get on board with the Tide Shaper. And then I can start holding up Fluster Storms. That was the one card that could give me pause here. But I think that if I just pass without playing my one drop, it's so obvious I have Fluster Storm that I'm not going to get them with it anyway. And if they're on Stoneforge Mystic, it doesn't matter. Come on, deck. Give me the land. Give me the land. Not a land, but I will take it. And I'm not going to attack into the Baleful Strix. This creature will eventually be unblockable. I'm not taking a, a stupid trade early. They have a Flooded Strand. Brainstorm. Okay, they must have Predict. That's the thing that makes sense for this sequencing. We I only know that because of game one. I'm still not convinced that setting up a Predict is necessarily better than getting a Shuffle off Brainstorm. But I'm not the expert with their deck. There's the Predict. No surprise there. I think this Fluster Storm is going to be really good. And I actually get to cast it. If I actually get to cast it, I guess. Ooh, a land. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I'm going to Tide Shaper and turn off their White Source, which also takes them off Triple Black. Okay. There you go. No attack here. Next turn, I can Vial in a Lord, Crunch for 6, and protect it all with Flusterstorm. Gotta hope that I get another turn. Uh, they tapped that Scrubland real fast, realized they were floating blue, and then untapped it. Okay, they've decided on Dark Ritual instead. Am I just dead? Should I have left up this Flusterstorm? May never know. Okay, so they can Doomsday... Yeah, I mean, it's possible I just lost. If they have a Edge of Autumn or a Street Wraith, I'm probably dead. I win if they don't, but I mean... Okay, they Doomsdayed, predicted, cracked their LED, so yeah, now they just win. Cool. Shouldn't have tapped out a Flusterstorm, it seems. Yeah, if I counter the predict, they lose. Yeah, okay. Sure. Alright, uh, that that game also was Mana Trouble. Like, I made some decisions also, but Mana Trouble was part of it. Like, if I just have a land to hold a Flusterstorm with, I win that game, but I did not have a land. And it's hard to know when when exactly the pivotal turn is where you have to hold up a land versus not. And they were dead next turn. I guess they weren't dead. They were at two next turn with Flusterstorm back up. I could make them dead if I cast a Master and then Viled in the other one and they didn't have a counter spell. But yeah, it was a close game and fell short. But okay, next round. On the draw, in the final round, I'm going to keep this hand. I have two lands. It's not double blue, but I have Vile, which checks that box as well. Okay. At least, I was about to say, if we're playing against another, is it Delver deck? I'm deleting my account. 
but we're not. We're playing against something completely different, and I'm totally okay with this. I feel like Force of Will is a good card to have in my hand right now. What did they pitch? They pitched Elvish Spirit Guide, so this is just straight up Belcher. Oh shit, then I might be dead to goblins right now. They bobble targeted me. Gamble. Okay, so they could gamble for Echo of Eons, I guess is the play here. I'm gonna let them do that and then counter the Echo, because that's one less Echo in their deck. I'm gonna pitch True Name Nemesis. Yeah, this is functionally just Goblin Char Vulture, and I have Force in my hand, which has historically been pretty good against Goblin Char Vulture. I'm going to play Vile off of Mutavault. Mutavault can attack next turn if I don't do anything else with it. I'm probably going to Tide Shaper their Volcanic Island, because they don't currently have a red source. Oh, that's probably better, but I cast that on zero. Okay, cast with Kicker. I'm going to turn their Volk into Not a Mountain, and then I'm going to Chalice on zero. Chalice is pretty good in this matchup. I think it's safe to say. They currently have green mana. One green, one blue mana. No red. This isn't on. Chalice on zero is stopping most of the ways to turn this on. Next turn, I can Violin Master and attack for six. I don't think I need to hold up Trickster for any reason. I think I'm just in doing damage mode right now. I guess I can put in Adept and see if I draw another Counterspell. I think that's reasonable to do here. Still putting tons of damage on the board. I'm going to leave Vial on two. None of my three drops are important for this matchup. I just want maximum velocity with the twos. Another Tide Shaper. That's cool. I don't need to shape the Tides anymore, though. All right, obey your master. Here they come. All right, they're dead on board. Let's go. Please don't kill me. They have five cards in hand, which is kind of a lot. But hopefully the Chalice on zero is doing some work here. Oh, if they have Veil of Summer, that gets around Chalice. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Oh, guess I'm just F6'd. Veil of Summer, ruining my life. One game at a time. Narset, okay. They don't really care about that. If they find Echo, they get to Echo, and I'm Hellbent. But if they don't, they're just dead on board. Well, they're dead on board anyway. They have to Echo and win. Okay, this is some sort of Turbo Narset deck. This is pretty cool. I like what they're doing. And I think I like my matchup for it, too. Flusterstorm's good. Grafdigger's Cage turns off Echo, which seems to be a pretty important part of their plan. I don't think I want Relic. That doesn't get Echo in a way that's important. Hercules Recall's pretty funny in this matchup, though I don't think that's what this is for. I could Truth for Narset. I probably actually do want Echoing Truth in case they empty the Warrens on me. I want these five cards, I think. And cards that are less important are the four true names and Trickster. Does that sound right? None of those interact particularly well with a combo deck. Just brought in a bunch more cards that are good against combo decks. The last thing I can do is cut the other trickster for a Herx recall, if I think that's something I'm interested in. But I don't think that I am. I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. I have a force. I have a threat. I have a chalice. Let's go. I like this hand on the play a lot more than I like it on the draw. I'll be honest. They did mull to six. LED. If they just have like the Veil Echo, that's kind of shitty. I think I force here anyway. Force the Veil, and then if they Echo, at least I have a chance to draw new cards I can cast. So they fought their Echo through. Okay, that's why I forced the Veil, because now I have double force that I can actually cast. Bobble. Pretty fortunate to draw a functional hand mana-wise off of that random 7, because as we've learned, a lot of the 7s in this deck don't make functional mana. Chromox Pitching Spirit Guide. Petal. Storm is 7. Another LED. 
Do they have another Veil and another Echo? If they do, I will go to Empty to fight over it. Okay. Not on my watch. Gonna force pitching. I think Tide Shaper, actually. Zvalen. Zvalen's card draw is pretty appealing to me, and there's a good chance I end up pitching it to force anyway. Maybe that was foolish, but I'm in for the raw power here. Okay, Vile's in. And drawing the land locks in Silver Girl add up for next turn. Happy to see that. Urza's bobble. Yeah, they're, I'm just max bobbling over there. They draw a card for bobble. Vile goes to one. They are getting close to rebuilding, which I'm not mega stoked about. But it's my job to put pressure on them at this point. Echoing Truth is good. That makes sure I don't lose to empty the Warrens. There's a Grape Shot in their graveyard, so they have main deck Grape Shot. Is their plan really just to spin and spin until they draw the Grape Shot? Because that's pretty cool if that is the plan. Just some pure storm bullshit. Vile goes to two, just in time. Get to put in another Adept. I'm going to do this before combat in case I draw a Lord or a Land or something that makes me want to do something different. So Adept's getting in. I get to cast Spalin. I still have Force of Will up. I could be a serious blue player and Echoing Truth, my Silver Girl Adept's picking them up and trying two new cards. That's card advantage over the course of multiple turns. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm definitely joking right now. There might be matchups where you do that. Like, if they were to Terminus or something. Like, if they cast Pyroclasm, I would probably make that play. But Pyroclasm, notwithstanding, that's not a play I'm going to make. Now Zvalen's going to start drawing cards. I'm leaving Vial on two. And ship it. I could Echoing Truth Chrome Mox just to set them back a mana. But I don't think that's the best use of that card. Lion's Eye Diamond, okay. Overmaster. Bummer. Okay. That only stops the next one. Riddlesmith, what the shit? Okay, well, whenever you cast an artifact spell, draw a card and discard a card. So do I force this? Because they've already overmastered. They might have been overmastering just to cantrip. It's instant or sorcery, okay. I'll go for a force on the Riddlesmith. That seems like a card that I'm going to want answered. Okay, they were just cantripping with that Overmaster. Which isn't necessarily a good thing. Okay, that was a great draw. That's how we do it. Bang. 3 plus 3 plus 4 is 10, and that's your life total. See you later. Okay. Salvaged the 2-3, half our money back. I do think we ran into a moto bug that would have drastically affected that Doomsday matchup. I think we win the game one in that matchup if Tide Shaper turns off Urborg. And I don't see a reason why it wouldn't. We pulled up the layers. They both happen in the same layer. The more recent one should work. So I, I'm i in on team moto bug. I am going to submit a report for that and try to get this league comped at least. But we saw... We saw ourselves basically get outclassed by Delver. Delver is just doing what Merfolk's trying to do, but way better at it, and way more axes to fight on. Like Our axes to fight on were basically put our creatures into play and hope they're big enough, and they had Lightning Bolt and Daze and all sorts of other stuff they could do, a Braid. They had all sorts of interaction. Obviously that deck is great, and the deck that boards in three Pyroblast post board versus the Mono Blue deck is naturally going to have some advantages. So that was tough to run into that twice in a league. Merfolk remains a thing you can do. I remain unimpressed with its mana base. I just wish that somehow I could have blue blue more often. The answer to that might be just play two mutavolts in 13 islands and accept that you will have creature lands less often, but that makes you stronger against wasteland anyway. It gives you a bigger range of capable hands. I think that maybe that's a place that you want to be. That's something worth considering. It takes Sometimes it takes someone from the outside to say, like, hey, do you need four mutavolts? When the Murpho community is like, well, every deck starts with four mutavolts. It's like, sure, but it doesn't have to end there. 
Nothing is sacred in magic deck building. If a card's not pulling its weight anymore, you can chop it. And Mutavault was good. Don't get me wrong, like we had a lot of good attack steps that involved Mutavault. We also had a lot of mulligans that involved Mutavault, and it's just gonna come down to what you value more. And I value being able to cast my spells more than sometimes my lands are creatures when I'm run out of spells to cast. So that's something to balance. The sideboard. There's not a whole lot that changes in Merfolk sideboards. This has been the same, like 14 cards, as long as I can remember. There's not a whole lot of room for movement. You could play more dismembers, I guess. You could play um you could play dress down now, which is kind of awkward because it turns off all your lords and turns off your Zvalen and turns off your true name, which is pretty bad, but if you're bringing it in, then it's probably against something like Thassa's Oracle or Urza Saga that you're struggling with, though. I think the Saga decks, our plan is to just attack through them with Island Walk. Also, Tide Shaper destroys Urza Saga. If it turns it into an island, it becomes a it becomes an island saga with more lore counters on it than chapters it has, and it dies immediately. So we can we have a lot of game versus saga decks, actually. What we don't have a lot of game against is red wasteland decks. Like Delver, basically. Well, that's those are my thoughts. Thank you, King Centaur, for having me play Merfolk again. I think I played this league pretty well. I think I did redeem the absolute brain dead shenanigans that were going on in my last Merfolk League. Didn't come up with a positive record, but I don't think it was my fault this time. I, I think that we just got beat enough times. And I'm okay with that. That's magic. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this was informative. Remember to check out the Boston Roll Patreon and YouTube membership options if you want to get into the Discord community and channel emotes and cool stuff like that. You want me to play your deck, that all happens through Patreon and YouTube membership. If you want to shop for cards, use my affiliate link in the video description. That helps out the channel, costs you nothing. And remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time.